How's it going, friends, and welcome to the channel. So this is episode three in Meng's D9R Bulldozer. And in this episode, we are going to be concentrating on uh, the Bulldozer's blade. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some sponge tipping technique and some hairspray technique all in one episode. What could go wrong? Probably quite a lot. So grab yourself a brew and a bicky and see what disaster comes out. Right, so let's get this blade all rusted up. So I've based it in a sort of like a dark brown color. I would have used uh, AK's chipping uh, color, but I'd run out. Uh, so what I did then was used uh, some shadow rust with a little bit of black in there, just to darken it up. So it's kind of like a, a chocolatey brown. And what we're gonna do now is use uh, chipping um, with the sponge. As you can see, I've, I've sort of shaped a sort of circular bit of sponge out. I'm using Shadow Rust, um, which is the, with the original colour I used, which is obviously mixed with a bit of black. Um, so obviously it's a quite a lighter colour. And literally, it's, it's so easy. All we need to do is just stipple it on. Um, of course, as you see me just there, I've took most of the paint off. So we've just got a little bit, um, you know, sort of coming through. Um, you can do this... You know, you can put as much or as little as you want on. Um, I mean, if you use this like I am, you know, you, you know how much you can get away with and kind of what, you know, you're looking for uh, and, and how it's going to turn out. But if it's something you haven't done before or if you just want really light chipping, you need to get as much as that paint off as possible onto, uh, you know, sort of like a, a paper towel. So all you've got is just like little traces um, of that, um, you know, uh, paint. Uh, coming off and also don't be discouraged with it because it's going to look a bit naff for a bit it, it takes a couple of layers um you know of different colors of chipping you know to get to kind of what you want um so yeah for a while it does look you know a bit crappy um so by this point i'm using uh old rust which obviously is slightly uh, lighter, so I'm not using old rust, I'm using uh, dark rust, sorry, uh, for this bit. Um, and then later on, I used a completely different color uh, from a different company. Uh, I used Comart's dark, I think this is dark rust as well. This is a little bit more uh, redder, but you know, that actually, you know, kind of works out as well. You know, you want to play with it for a bit. Um, you know, try and get, if you've got a test piece, you, you know, you can, you don't mind messing up and try it on something um, like that. But it says it will look, you know, for a while a bit, you know, not quite right. Um, you just need to keep going at it, um, adding different layers. And in the end, it just, it's one of those things, in the end, it just comes together. Now, as I get to this point, it's starting to look the way, you know, I want it to look. And I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Um, you know, it, says it just just takes a bit of practice and a little bit of time. And it's just, it's, it's just one of those things that just eventually it just it just comes together. Also, we're doing um, this type of technique. Now, I've been dabbing for quite a while uh, on all the layers. And as the paint dries, it does give you um, a little bit. Actually, no, it gives you quite a bit of texture if you've got quite a few layers on. Now, for me, I'm quite fine with that because rushed, you do get, um, you know, some texturing. So I'm not too bothered about that. Now, I also want to have the blades slightly polished um, as well. I know this sounds a bit weird having the two, but going through a lot of reference photos, um, searching the internet, I have I've found that there's different, you know, um, ways that this blade ends up i mean sometimes a lot of it is just a full polished blade um you know and no rust whatsoever and you know so you know do a bit of research if it's because i've never done anything particularly like this or on this type of vehicle so you know it's a little bit different so like i says i want um a little bit of uh, kind of polished um you know metal work because of course if it keeps getting used you know it, it starts to sort of polish the surface off 
So I've worked, you know, kind of halfway again, going off reference photos um, that I've seen. And after I got it to kind of the way I wanted it, I uh, used a few layers um, of uh, hairspray. So this is going to move us on to our second uh, chipping technique. Um, so I put about two or three relatively uh, thick coats on. And now I'm just um, basically because I definitely don't really, I, I definitely know where there's areas that I don't want, um, you know, any sort of flakes of paint uh, left behind and just want pure rust. So, and particularly with the polished area. So I've basically done the top half uh, of the blade uh, because it says that's the areas I know that I want to have, um, you know, paint chipped um, away off the blade also what you want to remember to do um, when you're painting um, the area is you want to have uh, relatively light coats um, over the top because it's going to make it very difficult to remove later on but of course you need you know enough of a coat um, you know to, to cover the entire area particularly if it's only little areas that you want um, chipping so to you know get this all going is we just need just a little bit of tap water as simple as that it's the same as that you use for you know like AK's uh, chipping fluid or MIGs and this just reacts react, reactivates um, the medium and just literally all you need to do is just you know rub away you can use a couple of different uh, types of doing the uh, you know sort of methods of doing this like I'm doing here I'm just using um, you know a relatively soft brush you can use uh, a kind of a, a coarser brush or if you just want some scratches you know you can use uh, something like a cocktail stick um, which is you know also very good um, or even um, you know if you've got like an old um, sewing needle or uh, airbrush needle that's quite good for doing um, scratches um, you'll do the same thing you'll reactivate it with a bit of water and then just you know make a couple of scratches but as you can see this is sort of leaving um, us with some um, you know nice little bits of paint fleck which is what I wanted uh, sort of left behind um, the other thing as well as I mentioned earlier that you know you're getting a bit of, there's a bit of texture to this because the way I did the stippling it kind of makes it a little bit more in some ways it makes it more difficult to remove it and then in other ways it actually can give you um, you know a relatively good um, sort of uh, finish it kind of helps because you know you're just taking you know off the top surface of that rough texture and it's sort of you know the paint sits um, you know sort of within the cracks of that texture if that makes any sense um, as well you're going to want to sort of clear away some of that um, you know residue of paint and, and hairspray so just use um, a dry brush and just gently just brush that away and, and clean the area up So there we go, that's my blade all done and dusted, and I'm pretty happy with it. So there we go, my friends. Um, that's the blade all done and dusted. Um, as you can see, I did struggle a little bit uh, with the hairspray te technique. It's not the first time, admittedly. Um, there's probably a good chance it might be just my application. Uh, I'm not 100% familiar with using actual hairspray, which is the original, um, you know, for this type of chipping. I'm more familiar with AK and Ming's, uh, Ming's MIG uh, chipping fluid. Um, I know how that works and I seem to just have better results with it. Um, so it's, it's probably just my application of it. I don't know. Um, if you, if anybody out there has had um, you know better results and spotted whatever I'm doing wrong, please put it in the comment section down below. It will help me and of course it will help somebody that actually wants to know how this is done properly. So... I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed the episode anyway if you haven't done so already or you're new around here please consider liking and subscribing to the channel of course as you know if you put bell notifications on that will tell you when the next episode is out also if you'd like to help with the channel uh, and uh, donate a little if you can spare it um, there are links in the description down below 
So, guys, thank you ever so much for watching. Again, I hope you have enjoyed, and I'll catch you again soon.